Most of the time, my videos just show whatever I happen to be working on that day. But today, I want to recap one of my favorite projects I've ever done, which is turning this simple lean-to shed into an ideal tractor attachment storage building. I also built a refueling station and custom stands for several of my attachments, and I did it without spending very much money at all. For the first six months after I bought my tractor, I had rows of attachments lined up around the yard. So leaving equipment out in the rain is not a good idea, and the sun is actually really hard on your attachments as well. But even more than that, I found it to be problematic because it made it harder to mow and weed eat. I could have just stuck some of the attachments into the shed, but I've also got mowers and a lot of other equipment that take up space. So I thought, how do I solve this problem without building another storage building? And the obvious solution is to stack the equipment vertically and use that unused space higher up in the air. Since I've already done several videos about the process of building these shelves, I already know what types of comments I'm going to get. Everyone's going to tell me that I should have just bought some pallet racking. And I have some pretty good reasons why I didn't. First, people keep telling me that you can get pallet racking for a reasonable price. Well, maybe some places you can, but I've done a lot of looking for pallet racking, and I have not found any for any type of reasonable price. But the real answer is that even if someone had given me pallet racking, I could not have used it in this space. This little shed is built onto a hill, and it's actually a pretty steep hill. And I know it's hard to see that in video, but there's probably a four foot drop across the 15 foot width of this building. Even if I had flattened out the area where my attachments were going to sit, I was kind of threading a needle between the height of the building and the fact I wanted to stack my attachments three layers high and the reach of my tractor. So I had to have my shelves an exact set of dimensions to make it all fit and make it work. So I started off building the center section to the exact dimensions of my attachments so that it could hold two sets of attachments per layer, three layers high. In terms of the construction, it's very simple. Essentially, I made my own wooden pallet racks to my own custom dimensions. I had a back 4x4 that was lag bolted to the structural beams holding up the roof. And then I put another set of 4x4s three foot out to represent the front of the shelf. The top shelf is actually a full four foot but you'll see that in a minute. There were a lot of people who were worried about the way I built these shelves and concerned that it would not hold up over time. As I record this recap video, it's been a full three years since I built these shelves and they are just as solid and sturdy as they were the day I built them. Because the tops of these 4x4 posts are connected to the joist on the roof, a lot of people were concerned that I was putting too much strain on the roof of the building and that when I got a good snow, it was all going to collapse. Well, a couple things there. First, we hardly ever get snow here in Kansas. And more importantly, I'm not hanging this from the ceiling. It could sit here freestanding and hold this weight. It's not pulling down on the roof. If I had any effect on the strength of the building... I actually added support to the roof. Sorry for wasting so much time answering those frequently asked questions, but if you were getting ready to type the same thing, I wanted to save you the time. So once we had the shelves framed in, we covered those with three quarter inch plywood and just set a couple of attachments on to make sure everything was working. Then we repeated that process with another shelf right above that one. Now I happen to be running a manufacturing business that used a lot of lumber so I spent basically nothing I just already had all these materials setting around but if you were doing the same thing you would spend I guess two or three hundred dollars on lumber but I felt pretty good about our progress on day one where we finished this entire center section and had attachments setting on it at first I wasn't sure if any of this was a good idea but I was so happy with this first section, I decided to finish out the whole building in a similar manner. But 
each section of the building really required a different type of shelving. You might be able to see, if you look at the right side of this video clip, you'll see that I had a couple of fuel transfer tanks set up. And my next step was getting those set up with a shelving system integrated on this back wall. We had also been storing some of the overstock merchandise down in this section, so I had to get that all cleared out of the way. I decided to put my fuel transfer tanks at ground level side by side. So I took measurements of the height of the top of the pump and built my shelf with just enough clearance to get those transfer tanks in and out. Then once I had my shelf built, I decided to put my mid-mount mower deck on top of it because it's just the right size. Two days and two sections of shelving built. Now a lot of people run their transfer tanks off of a hand pump, but me personally, I think it's a lot more convenient to run an electric pump on these, especially if you can't get your equipment right up next to the tank. But I also wasn't crazy about constantly putting the little alligator clips onto the battery every time I want to fill, and I found it more convenient to permanently hook those up to a battery and put that battery onto a trickle charge. So right now you see me installing a solar panel on the outside of the shed that runs into that battery. For the third section of shelving, the challenge was that we're dealing with larger, harder to move attachments, such as the backhoe for the tractor. I wanted to be able to put it in the building, but it was kind of difficult to take it on and off of the tractor inside the building. So I designed and built a custom stand that allowed me to carry the backhoe with the pallet forks on the tractor. It's been a couple years since I've built this and I think it was a huge success. For me it's worked a lot better than trying to set the backhoe on a pallet because with this stand it doesn't allow the backhoe to sag over time and I'm able to drive right over the top of it while it's still in the cradle. I did the exact same thing with my box blade. Here you can see the box blade strapped to a pallet and I was using that to set it up on a shelf. And that worked but not nearly as well as building a custom pallet that was the exact right size and held the box blade in place without any kind of straps. This has worked well enough that I intend to build more of these custom attachment holders to make it easier to move all the equipment around when needed. For the third section of shelving, I picked my largest or hardest to move attachments and lined those up on the ground and then custom designed the shelf that would allow me to take those in and out but still leave enough room that I could put things above them. So I just placed the backhoe, the stump grinder, and my carry-all in here at that time. Later I decided to keep the wood chipper under the shelf and the carry-all out in front because it's so easy to move with the pallet forks. And then I used the same strategy 4x4 support post, 2x6 for your joist, and I had those in joist hangers. For support beams I put a center support going down in the middle of the shelf and going up. Most of the time what I keep on this shelf is fairly lightweight stuff like a landscape rake, snow plow, and my extra artillion attachments that I don't use as often. At this point I've done three-fourths of the back wall of the building and I'm still waiting to do that last section but I moved on to making the most of the storage space available along the walls. My tractor has an aftermarket cab that has multiple types of removable doors and I only use those doors when it's cold or rainy. So this is a custom rack for storing those doors when they're not in use and that has been really handy. On the opposite end of the building I've got all my chainsaws and 
yard tools, and ladders and all of that kind of stuff hanging up. Uh, you might notice the set of doors down at the end, but that's before I move them to the other side. Now through most of this video I've been telling you how great everything worked out. And mostly it did. You guys told me all kinds of problems I was going to have, or some of you did, and I didn't have any of those problems. Everyone said I would shove my pallet forks through the back wall. That hasn't happened. But I did tear this shelf up right here, and I want to point out my mistake. So I had a grapple under there. I lifted it up and just a little bit too high and then backed out, snagged it, and broke the board. So I've had to make one repair in over three years of having this system in place. And this is how it looks now. I've got one more section on the left side of the screen here that I could build shelves on, and I haven't decided if I'm going to or not. Let me know what you guys think. But, mainly, I just appreciate you guys taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.